Good afternoon. I hope you're really enjoying these studies. I'm really finding this study on Daniel chapter 6 so interesting that I'm continuing with my studies with you, these five-minute presentations. Before I go to Daniel chapter 6 and see how the plot again even progresses, I want you to notice a scripture found in Matthew 24. In verse 45, Jesus says, When, who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? You see here, Jesus says, a, 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 a wise and faithful servant is one who is doing what God asked him to do, and that is to look after those that, he's, that are underneath him, the servants underneath him. It says there in verse 46, It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. But then he says this, I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. You see, if we are faithful and true, and we, and we are always remaining faithful and true, no matter what circumstances, we will put, be put in charge of greater things. But I want you to notice what verse 48 says. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is staying away a long time. And then he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And at an hour he is not aware of, he will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be a weeping and a gnashing of teeth. Dear friends, I'm clearly told here that we need to be wise servants. And a wise servant is one who's found doing what God wanted him to do. And that is to treat his fellow man with respect and love and to love the Lord his God with all his heart. Now remember in the conclusion of our last study, we saw that the only way that these administrators, those that, uh, that were put subject to Daniel, the only way they could find fault with Daniel was to challenge him when it came to his God. Now I want you to notice this, that they, they put a plan together. Um, they actually mislead Darius, but we will see this as we go on. So it says there in verse 6, So the administrators and the satraps went as a group to the king and said, O King Darius, live forever. It's amazing here they come to him and they're trying to um, lift him up and make him more than what he is. It's almost as if their words aren't truthful, but they're preparing him. For what they want him to do. Then it says there in verse 7. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors and governors. Have all agreed that the king should issue an edict. And enforce the decree that anyone who prays to any god or man. During the next 30 days. Except to you O king. Shall be thrown into the lion's den. I want you to notice the trap here. Did you see that they said something which is not truthful? They said that all the administrators and satraps agree. But who do we know wouldn't agree with this? Obviously Daniel. Because what did they want everybody to do? And that is to worship Darius as the God of the, of the world. And that no other God should be worshipped for at least 30 days, one month. Dear friends, do you know that in the end, the challenge that is going to come to us is if we are going to worship God, the creator of heaven and earth, or if we are going to subject ourselves to administrators who claim to be gods, to people who are creation, who claim to be the vicars of God, if we are going to be subject and worship them. If we are going to listen to them or if we are going to listen to God, this defining God, the God of creation, the God who made heaven and earth. Remember the first message of the first angel found in Revelation chapter 14. 
There are three angels that say this, that have a message for us. And the first angel's message is, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made heaven and earth. May God help us to worship Him, the Creator of heaven and earth. When we are challenged to worship the dictates of man, may we always remember that we need to, to bow only our knee to the King of the universe. May God help us to do this.